David, will you open us up with prayer, please? Sure. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before your throne of grace one more time, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God, for another opportunity to come together, O oh God. Come together, O oh God, to learn and to study, O oh God, to be approved, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, for the grace of the Holy Spirit to come upon us, O oh God, to strengthen our concentration on tonight, O oh God, that we may learn the subject that's at hand, O oh God, and use it, O oh Lord, to carry out the great commission, go forth and make disciples. These things we pray for, O oh God, and you're thankful in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 As we get started on tonight, we're fit, we're gonna we're gonna finish up uh, chapter number one, and you have your notes. I'm not really gonna go from the notes on tonight like I normally do, mm -hmm. uh, because I got I have the book right here in front of me, and I was looking at it this morning, and I kind of want to do it uh, from right from what I see. But a couple of things that you'll see in the in the notes is that there are two things that we have to look at when it comes to the discipleship process. That is the focus and the methodology. I don't know if you all had a chance to read through the book yet in chapter one, but uh, but the focus. Think of the church's focus as the primary emphasis that it commits its time and resources to achieve. Y'all with me? And the second is methodology. This is the way the church sets itself up to systemat systematically to accomplish its purpose or the manner in which it tries to achieve its focus. So we do understand that the focus and the methodology are linked. Are there any questions about the focus and the methodology? No? Everybody, everybody understand? It's almost focus. like what he asked us to do for Saturday. The focus would be our purpose, right? So, yeah, the focus is our primary emphasis. And the methodology would be the strategies we use. The strategies that we use mm -hmm. to get to, to, to accomplish our focus. Mm -hmm. Understand this. Every church has a focus and they have a methodology, whether they realize it or not. So HMBC has a focus and a methodology, and the Church Without Walls has a focus and a methodology. Now, some of the some of the different focuses, and you can find those in your books. The book has category one, the educational. And the educational, a pastor, pastoral educational focus with a classroom methodology. And I'm not going to go too deep into these because we all vary in the different focuses and methodology. But in the educational category, a church uses the bulk of its energy on biblical education. It is understood that the pastor's job is to provide this education for the people. Y'all with me? Leaders and members make well-intentioned statements such as, we, we believe the Bible is the word, and we want to get it into the heads of our people. Churches with this emphasis focus on Bible study and doctrine. Have you ever been to a church like that? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> then we have what the book call is attractional. An attractional focus with an entertainment methodology. Mm. Yeah. Mm. We, we've seen that before, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we have number three. And like I said, go through your books. You have the missional. The missional focus with the service opportunity methodology. Churches in the, the missional category are sometimes referred to as social justice churches. Mm -hmm. The focus is biblical action. They want to be, you, you see those, those, those pastors that want you to take action. As soon as something happens, take action. That's those type of churches. Then you have what they have listed as the organic or home, a fellowship focus 
with an organic methodology. In the organic category, the emphasis is biblical relationships or fellowships. These churches focus on the Bible, on Bible verses that talk about how people need to be devoted to each other in brotherly love and in close fellowship. But, they, but when you look at all these methodologies, focuses and methodologies, there is something missing. Now, many churches, they don't fall into one category. They fall into multiple categories. Mm -hmm. So even though I think we follow the category number one, we, we kind of balance across the board. But there's something missing in the when we look at these, the, the, these focuses and methodology. You have to ask yourself this question. Are people being transformed from spiritual being spiritually immature to being mature? Hopefully. Are they following Jesus regularly? Is their fellowship lasting? And are they effective? The answer to most st statistics is no. Mm. Even though you have all this doctrine, you have all this fellowship, you have all this entertainment, we have consistently failed the body of Christ. Mm. Amen? Amen. I agree. The common element in the four categories of churches is that the models are incomplete. The focus and methodology are improperly placed in such a way that they are missing components that leave the church one dimensional when the church was meant to be complete. I think we can agree that many of our churches are one dimensional. Amen. Amen. And we, we're going somewhere with this. Mm -hmm. But I want you to see what's going on. We can't fix the problem, Keisha, if we don't identify the problem. The, uh, the, the only way we can change this is that we have to be willing to have a disciple shift. Most of the time, people go to churches where they love to hear the pastor. And I know Ray is just saying hallelujah right now. Yeah. <laughs> Michelle is shouting wherever she is. David just fainted. Right here, pastor. Right here. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> they they, they, they want to go. Most people want to go to the church where they want to hear the pastor. But what happens, and I don't push this at Hope Missionary Baptist Church, but I've seen it happen. The people become too reliant on the pastor. Hmm. They rely on his learning, his studying, Oh, let me let me let me let me step back. His or her learning, mm -hmm. his or her studying, mm -hmm. his or her understanding, but they never get the Bible for themselves. Yeah. I mean, yes, but not Sister Sharon or Sister Michelle. <laughs> but, but 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 many folks, we 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 are keeping it real on tonight. Mm -hmm. They come to get. We, we always talk about this. They come to get. Filled up on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Now, because Keisha, because Keisha ain't been <laughs> in my class before, so I'm gonna use Keisha as my example on tonight. So, Keisha, on Sunday we're gonna invite you to hope we, we, we're gonna invite you to spend the whole week with Hope Missionary Baptist Church. And what we're we gonna have? We, we we gonna have the old time pastors they feed you. Oh, oh. That means Ray is gonna make his mac and cheese. <laughs> We 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 gonna get we gonna get that good fried chicken from Shoprite. We gonna we gonna get that. We gonna get some good delicious greens and whatever dessert you want, you can have. But the only the only catch is, the only catch is, as you spend the week with Hope Missionary Baptist Church, you can only eat on Sunday. <laughs> you, you you have you have from eleven to one o'clock to eat whatever you want. This is uh, on Sunday. 
But well, after that, you don't eat again until next Sunday. Are you going to be able to survive? And, and, and no, not unless they're playing fast. That's not going. That's not going to work out. Uh, exactly. <laughs> but I'm laughing. I'm laughing because you all in my lesson from yesterday about studying the Bible. So I'm just no. telling you. And, and, and the thing is, but that's the mindset that ha I, I've been in church a long time. I'll be 50 years old this year. Praise the Lord. That means 45 years ago, I got baptized. Woo, Lord Jesus. 40, so church ain't changed. In, in the, okay. my 45 years of going to church, it has oh, not changed. Yeah. Pastor, and we, can I interject when you get yes, done? Yes, yes, go ahead. Okay. I will say this. I have not been going to church that long. Howsomever, I will tell you this. The reason why people come to the church and they're so enamored with the pastor or with the preacher or whomever it might be is because they are not encouraged on any level to seek God for themselves. They do believe, and this is true, they believe when they come to church on Sunday, as long as they come to church, they listen to the word and they're good stewards that they're a-okay. Never in their life have they been taught. You're supposed to have a connection, a real connection with God and intimacy with God like you have with your husband or like you have with your best friend. They have no clue about that. And the ministers or pastors or preachers are not trying to give them that information. Well, here at Home Missionary Baptist Church, you are kidding it. Amen. Oh. And, and, and they got it to control worldwide too. <laughs> I don't I don't oh. think it's fair. I don't think it's fair to say across the blanket that that's the case in all churches. It's close. Sure, it's, it's close. It's close. Hey, real talk, you know, and I'm not being funny. It's this okay, one of the things that we discussed in prior classes and from the pulpit is that the church is full of converts. Okay. Well, I think we're going to get to that a little bit tonight. But there are a lot of people that believe that, hey, if you look, if you look at the Bible, and, I, and it's in the lesson for tonight, uh, if, you, if you read it, David, you'll see. In the Bible, Jesus referred to them as disciples first, and they were mm. referred to as Christians later. Mm. But there's no difference. But somehow there has become a difference. And discipleship is that's why it's so you know, people grasp hold of it so 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 sternly is because it's the it's like a lost art in the church. And it's a, it's across the board. It's it's, it's the, in the Baptist church. Because if you go to other religions, <clears throat> whatever doctrine they have, they are teaching that doctrine and expecting the people to live out that doctrine. Are you saying religious or denominations? Mm. Michelle, which um, one is that by me? Okay, I'm oh, thinking- Probably okay. both. My, now, my now, now, I'll say this about denominations. Uh, denominations, some of them are just as lost as we are. Mm -hmm. They're even worse because they don't have the same level of doctrine that we have. Now, okay. what most people will do, they will live out the doctrine that they know, which is good. Yes. But we also understand that the, but the we are responsible not only for what we know, but we are responsible for the whole Bible. And that's what I, I try to teach you all here at Hope okay. Missionary Baptist Church. We are responsible for knowing it all. If somebody might have told you, know, we I've been in the Pentecostal church when I was young. When it was don't drink, don't smoke, don't commit no fornication, don't wear no pants, don't wear no earrings. I've been there. And that was but that was the doctrine. But still, you would have people walking in their own way. And I and I said this in the Pentecostal church. And I, you know, I don't mind people. I just, they they said the Baptists abuse the word. I said we may abuse the word, but you all abuse the spirit. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to separate myself from all of that because that's not what I know. What I know is teaching. Mm -hmm. And I know that other um, religious organizations teach their people the word that they're supposed to be living and or spreading. And they are accountable. They're not just, um, they're not just fed like on Sundays, like, you know, like you say, you come to church and you hear the sermon. If these 
they're, 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 they're accountable to know that word. That means they're in that word during the week and somebody's overseeing them. Somebody is um, is teaching them on a regular basis and, and, and finding out what they know and what they don't know. Mm-hmm. And, so, and what we try to do, and our group is pretty small, even though the church is bigger, we uh, we pretty much know what we know and we don't know, and we address it. And and Keisha, this is this is this is this is my number one student here. <laughs> <laughs> don't believe that, Keisha. <laughs> she 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 gonna keep questioning and pushing. I don't understand. No no no. no. She 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 she. she, she I, I, wanna say, I wanna say I think that that, that um one of the things that's so true is that. You can go into various denominations and just and it's just like Baptist or, or black or anything of that nature. There are some places where the accountability is really strong, and there are places where the accountability is weak, no matter no, no, no matter where you are, no matter what denomination it is, there are places where people you always have more people in church on Sunday than you ever have in Bible study. Right. Amen. And we call That's, that we call we call that Keisha the you, you'll learn this. Later on, this is that's the Prado principle. Eighty percent of the people, well, twenty percent of the people do eighty percent of the work. You're always going to have that twenty percent that shows up. If you're in a small church, twenty percent. If you're in a medium sized church, twenty percent. If you are in a mega church, it is still twenty percent. Twenty percent of the people show up, and so that's how it is. But we have to understand as we move forward that it's discipleship not evangelism. The solution emerges. The book says the solution emerges when a church shifts its focus to biblical discipleship using the methodology of relational environments. So what that means is that our focus must be discipleship and we are, our methodology is relationships. Y'all should be writing that down. That's kind of what we've been we were circling. I said we're we gonna get to it. The, our methodology that, that that's basically what I want to get. I'm, I'm gonna go through a little bit more tonight, but I want you to grasp that our, our focus is biblical discipleship. Mm -hmm. We always say the church is here to make disciples of the lost. Mm -hmm. Our focus is a biblical discipleship, and we do this by using our relationships. Mm -hmm. I remember when I first got here. You know, Ray, I know Ray's health has declined a little bit, but everywhere Ray would go, Janice would be in the store. He'd be talking to somebody, you know, moving carts. He'd be talking to somebody doing this. He was flexing his relational muscle. Oh, amen. And, so. you, and you cannot have relationships with people if you're not interacting with people. True. 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 So our so we got to understand that the method. By which, and I want to make this plain, the method by which we make disciples is by what? Relationship. Mm -hmm. So that means Hope Missionary Baptist Church, mm -hmm. inside of Hope Missionary Baptist Church, we have to have relationships. Amen. We just don't come and go. We must begin to build relationships. With one another? With one another. Absolutely. The Bible says we are to love the Lord our God with all our heart and our soul and our mind, and we are to love one another. Yes. You, that we you know, may not all diminished a bit was um during the pandemic, right? During mm -hmm. the pandemic, we 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 just had to get out of there. Mm -hmm. But now it is um something to be mindful of rebuilding. Yes, but so we understand that our focus is what biblical. Right. Biblical discipleship. Mm -hmm. We come to church for biblical discipleship. We have a lot of other things that we do, but our main focus, our primary objective is biblical <laughs> discipleship, and we do that by having relationships. Mm -hmm. Keisha wouldn't be on the line tonight if she didn't have a relationship with us. Right. Hi, Keisha. Mighty oh, God. Hello. <laughs> it's absolutely true. Absolutely true. Yes. Yeah. Biblical discipleship should be the core focus of every church. Do we agree? Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah I agree with that. 
how else you gonna go forth? I mean, how else you gonna go? You can't go without de developing it. You cannot. Right. Oh, you it's should so not. Let's say right. that you should not. You can have all the in entertainment in the world and not have relationship. You can have all the teaching in the world. When I have relationship, you can have all the different home churches and still not mm -hmm. have relationship. Mm -hmm. Relationships must be the core focus of discipleship. Mm -hmm. And my father said, "That's the new commandment." I'm sorry, I believe. Look, 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 look. We, we interrupt here tonight. I believe the re so so one of the things that I say every day when we go live is to love one another, and I believe that the reason that that's there is because of how important relationship is to God and how important it is in order for us to be biblical disciples is relationships. And until we really understand that verse and really dig into it, we'll keep missing it. Mm -hmm. We'll keep missing it because that's why it's there. You cannot move. You cannot grow without it. You, you hit the nail on the head. The relationships are the key to our sanctification. Absolutely. If we can't have relationships with one another, how are we going to have relationship with Jesus and most importantly with his father? Right. But think about it. If, if, if that was the ends to a mean, you get saved and get beamed up to heaven. <laughs> but what God does, he saves us and leaves us with one another. That's right. And the true growth comes from us learning to navigate one another's personalities in love. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's ever pastored or ever led, no, I'm going to tell you something I hope Missionary Baptist Church, yes, the people are there, but I pastored the personalities. Mm -hmm. We got the folks here on tonight. We got one, two, three, four, five. That's five different personalities. Mm -hmm. Now, Ray, Ray may be in the headlock by Janice, but he still got different personalities. <laughs> Amen. Well, relation, and, and I, I tell you, it's, and so Keisha, I'm gonna tell you, me, me and relate, me and Ray's relationship is such is, is, is such that Janice would not allow him to sit with me in church if I'm not preaching. Because <laughs> me and Ray will cut up all service. Just won't behave. <laughs> but that, but that's part of our relationship. That's what makes us who we are. What happened to you? Yes. So, but yes, but we understand. My father said this. I was trying to get to this point. A lot of people want to be a part of an upbeat church. Some people desire to be a part of a downbeat church. It's a little more chill, a little more relaxed. But what we should desire is to be a part of a church, no matter how many people are in it, that heartbeat beats with the beat of heartbeat of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yes. If some people gauge success, and I think Keisha and I talked about this before, by the size of the church or where it is, no that's not that's not that's not success. Nope. Are your members loving on God and loving on one another? Are they walking in obedience? Are they in prayer daily? Are they in the Word? Are they in a reflection of what God has done? Mm -hmm. So, so success is not built off of size; it's built of how effective you are. But we do understand that our focus is biblical discipleship. Our methodology is relationships. But see, and one of the things we have to understand is, and I, and I say this at Hope all the time, people are going to get on your nerves. Amen? Amen. People are going to get on your nerves, but you get on people's nerves too. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Boo, do I get over the nurse? Amen. 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 Uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, what the thing is, it, 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 what, the, what does the scripture say? Oh, how good and how pleasant it is uh -huh. for brethren to dwell together in unity. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and, no and, no and no matter what, we are to dwell together in unity. When I mean unity, I'm saying in love. Mm hmm. We are not always going to agree. We are not always going to see eye to eye. Your agenda will not always be passed. The vote will not always go your way. But it is our mandate to be unified and not to divide. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. When we, look, when we look at the New Testament, because our churches must be Christ-centered. 
And, and, and Jesus talks about himself. He says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd, the vine, the gate, the door, the way, the truth, the life. Mm. And so the ideal life, th think about it, even in the midst of traumatic times, the ideal life is a life that, that is focused on Jesus Christ. Yes. And so in our relationships, we have to show people that our lives are focused on Christ. Mm -hmm. And remember, we fall short every day. Mm -hmm. But we have to remind folks that, you know, we were wrong. We shouldn't have said that. We shouldn't have done that. But my life is still focused on Christ. Where if I was preaching that, you know what I would say on Christ. The, the solid, solid rock I stand. I stand. All yeah. of the ground yeah. is sinking sand. Yeah. And, 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 and that's, and, and that's today. We, we have yeah. to, you know, it, it, it may sound cliche but you have to remember that. You have to stand firm. I think Marie talked about this Sunday and build on the solid rock. If I could take one out of Ray's book from 12 years ago, you have to build with integrity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember that, Ray? Yes, sir. But, but, but our lives as disciples, and not only, and check this out, not only are you disciples, you are also to be disciplers. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And we, we took it a step further a few a, a couple of months back. Not only are we to be disciplers, Keisha, we are to be mentors. And as mentors and disciplers, we cannot be insecure. Preach, Larry, I'm doing the best I can, Bishop. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, you know, you're only insecure if you don't have that relationship with God, with Jesus. You don't have that, you know, one of one of the things I, I still struggle with as I get ready to prepare for a, a, a lesson like the lesson tonight, I was nervous. I was like, am I gonna uh, are they gonna accept this message? I, I, I took it personal. I still go through that. Every every time I get ready to get on get get on, get on, get on, get on, I, I'm like, ah, oh. I, I always tear myself apart and doubt myself. Mm -hmm. But I got to understand that it ain't me speaking. It's God's mm -hmm. putting his word in me. And, and a lot of times, Ray, it's you realizing your own inadequacies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because see, it, it, see, the light don't shine no brighter than when you were about, about to hit the microphone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every Sunday, I, I don't, I don't, you know, every Sunday, the, 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 the toughest time for me is in between the next speaking voice you hear and the end of the song. Yes. I'll be like, Woo. I mean, Michelle, Michelle will sit next to me. I, I, I'm, I'm focused. I mean, I, I'm in prayer. I'm like, Lord, I'm like, Lord, uh, empty me out. Fill me up. Mm -hmm. Your power, your preaching power, the power that makes preaching easy because I know it's him. Yeah, I got to lean on that relationship with him. You got, look, you got, you, you got no choice. You yeah. got no choice. And, and you feel like, you like, because let me tell you something. I, I, let me just be real about it. It's just words. It's really mm. just words until God gives it power. Yeah. Mm. It's it's words. It's, 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 it's on the iPad. For me, I'm like, oh, it just it's like it is like, whoa, please, Lord, let you know, show yourself faithful. Mm. Show yourself faithful. I mean, I, I don't think it's a you know, I think it's really us leading on our relationship, knowing that we are inadequate. Right. I, I, I know. I you know. So ain't, ain't nobody. It, it, I know y'all are ready for a word on Sunday, and I'll be up there like, Lord, please. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get up there, humming, 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 humming. Hey, 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 hey. You, you just have to lean and depend on the Holy Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> and one thing I learned for those who I got mostly my ministers of training up coming up in my deacons is that's where the power is. And I know y'all yeah. don't know. I know y'all don't know what goes on, you know, like behind the sacred desk, unless you've been back there. But it was one Sunday, Keisha. I'm not telling no story. I had wrote down some points on a sticky pad, and I had my my sermon right here on the iPad. And I said, "Well, I'm gonna start talking about the stuff." God said, "Start talking about this stuff." So I'm talking. I got like my little points laid out. My three little ones. I'm gonna go through, and I'm going, 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 going. Next thing I look at my watch, it's 25 minutes here. Spirit said, you better close it on out now. <laughs> Everybody over here not even touched. 
<laughs> and you know, and, and another Sunday, I was in the when we had Sunday school, you know, full fledged Sunday school in the building. I had started writing out the sermon for the next Sunday. I had, I was jotting down those things was good. I had them in my book, and I sat on the pulpit, had my iPad ready, and God said, "Preach what you was just writing." <laughs> you do it. <laughs> I said, I said, are you serious? I said, no, 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 no. I got this all ready to go right here. This ready to go. It's got the clothes, and everything on. It's good. I want you to say. He said, no, no. He said, go back and get it. And I told David, I said, David, go get my uh, my book. And, and, and the power is where the spirit directs you. Yes, of course. The power is there. And so if we're going to be a relational church, Mm -hmm. Take it back to where, where where we can apply this. If we're going to be a relational church, and I'm not talking about these two different churches on the line, because we really just one church. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, amen. In Christ. Because mm -hmm. when we get to heaven, Keisha mm -hmm. ain't going to be over there passing her church, not passing mine. Mm -hmm. We're going to all get together. In one place. So we, so, we, so we have to focus, we have to let the Holy Spirit guide us. We have to be intentional about allowing the Holy Spirit to guide us in our relationships. Yeah. Amen. You're not going to be pleased with everybody. and Everybody's not going to be pleased with you, but it is our mandate to be unified because the body of Christ should be unified. And I think I stated this the other Sunday. You have never woke up in the morning and your body not been unified. <laughs> And you might think, oh, I, you know, I, I'm I'm the weakest link, but mm -hmm. we. And I, I say this too. So many people feel that that little baby toe. Ooh. Do you don't even pay attention to it? But let yeah. you stub that bad boy on your bed. Yeah. But let you know how significant it is. Uh huh. Mm. So every part of the body is mm -hmm. significant. Mm hmm. You may not be able to see every part of the body, and the problem is, people want to be the part of the body that people see. Mm. But I can't see your heart, but you need it. Yeah, that's right. I can't see your lungs, but you need it. Mm -hmm. I can't see your kidneys, but you showing up need them. Yes. And so every part of the body mm -hmm. is significant and needed. So in we must be way. Hmm? in its own way. In its own way. It, with di with different purpose. It, it, it's it's like um I stayed a Sunday to you all. In the in the leadership charge about the car, I said, "What part of the car is the leader? Mm -hmm. Is it the battery? Is it the spark plugs? Is it the wire? Is it this? Is it that? All of it is the leader because you need every part to make it function correctly. We That's need right. every part to make the body of Christ function correctly. That's mm -hmm. why our, our our methodology is relational." Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the weakest piece should bring us together in prayer. Just like if you hit your toe, it'll take you to your knees. Amen. <laughs> the weakest part yes. of the body ought to bring us, bring us together to pray Preach. for one another. Preach. Bring us yes. together. To uh, she be preaching every day. I mean, y'all, y'all can get on Facebook now. <laughs> every day, and if you miss it, just go to her page. She, I, I let her put it, you know, put it in the chat and everything, and let y'all know, you know. Amen. I, I don't mind. I don't mind y'all going to hear a word from her. Uh, she can preach. Amen. She can preach now. Amen. So and, and so and I, and I felt like David Belchers, Deacon David Belchers, had read this chapter. I know he read the chapter because he started off with the Great Commission. That's where I'm going. Mm -hmm. It says, "All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. So go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father." and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the oh. end of the age. We are commanded to make disciples. It doesn't yes. say here that we are supposed to make converts. Ray's message tonight, just, just tell Pastor your, uh, the title. No, I, was, I, was, I was just coming from... Uh... Proverbs. Proverbs 22 and 6. Uh-huh. And the title? Uh, what was it? Creating thing? New Disciples. Uh oh, see. There you go. Right on point. Speaking of the children, train, again, training them up as disciples. Mm -hmm. the way and and, and, and that's, our, that's our mandate. Mm -hmm. yes. and, 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 and it requires us to do what we view as extra. 
Mm-hmm. But I'm, what I'm going to say is we're supposed to be doing it anyway. Examples. Mm-hmm. I always, in that classroom, I had to be very mindful of the way I carried myself. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I I carried myself the way my parents raised me. Mm-hmm. And we have to be mindful about how we carry ourselves. Yes. yes. And to use our platform. Right. All platforms are not foundations. Jesus is our foundation. Right. We have Let me tell you something. When you start to build on Jesus, expect to be attacked. Mm-hmm. And I think, and I, I, let me go back to Ray. Ray, Ray. Ray told me years ago, how, the enemy be like, how dare you encourage these people? How dare you give them hope? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the enemy is, not, you know, like I said, he don't, and I tell you before, and I said, but Keisha on the line, see, the enemy, Keisha, don't mess with teammates. Amen. Pass if I may. That's okay. why relationship is so, so important in making disciples. Because you have to, you can't have uh, one of those uppity or better than thou type of relationships because that's going to turn people away from you. You have to have more like a humbling and a friendly relationship. There's all type of relationships and what have you. You have to have the right type of relationship that attracts people to you. Mm-hmm. In relationship, as opposed to turning people away. Right, and they're organic. So I'm, let me and let, and let me let me let me talk about David for a minute. <laughs> when, when, when we had COVID, when we, we know we were starting to get things back set up, it was me, David, and Ricky. We were coming to the church. That, that, that it was it was that's how I was every Sunday. But then David took ill, and it was like man, like it, it wasn't even the same no more because we missed David because of our relationship with David. It just wasn't the same. And I, and I and I and I, I I I feel that way about my church. I gotta say that <laughs> because I used I used to be like, man, let me get on vacation. I gotta get away. I gotta get away. Now they be so quiet because they get they can handle things on their own. I'm like, they don't even miss me. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Keisha, they be so quiet. I don't think they even miss me. <laughs> I'm so so I gotta peep. I gotta peep in on them. I'm like, you know, make sure they okay. They okay. But yes, it's about and then David is right. It's about the relationships. And, and, and the thing, and the thing, and I think the thing with me, I can't speak on any other pastor. See, I was here in New York by myself. So these folks were my family. Mm. Even That's when Randy just left me at church by myself. Important to me. Also. That I said, yeah, but y'all left me at church by myself. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> they were like, they're like, why? <laughs> But the, but they but that but that I think that that has created a special bond between me and the members of Hope because it's not just pastor, you know, parishioner relationship. I view us as family. Yes. They've been a part of my life for twelve years. And it's like you know that it, 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 I, you know I you know and it's hard even like um even when you know somebody passed away we had just had a funeral. It was hard for me because the longer I'm here, the closer I get to them. Mm-hmm. And so, but but that's what I think has made us a more effective church is the fact that we are in relationship. And let me tell you something, Keisha. These folk would not leave your church if you can't let them come. <laughs> they will fellowship, fellowship, fellowship at your church if they come to your church, just so you know. Especially if you get fried chicken. <laughs> 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 we, we, were, we were at another church. We were at another church. I don't know what service we were at. And the other church was gone, and Hope was in the same. I said, we got to go, y'all. This ain't our church. <laughs> we were at Holy Trinity. We were at Holy Trinity. I said, we, I said, this is not our church. We have to go. But that, but that's how the people are. You have to literally tell the members of Hope, say, okay, look, I'm sick. I, I can't. You, no phone calls. Don't come back because they will come back. They will call you. Uh, call you a lot. <laughs> It, but that's but that's the love that we you know and, and and the bond that we have together. And even in our even our, when we have you know differences of opinion, that still binds us together. That mm-hmm. that relationship that David is talking about. But we have to understand, as disciples, we are not merely converts. Like I stated, we are doers. Amen. 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 We are doers. Mm-hmm. We are learners. Yes. 
We are students. Yes. We are Christ's followers. Yes. Better yet, we are his apprentices. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we have to carry out. Think you think about it. You have to carry yourself in a way when you get off this line and say, look, I am an apprentice to Christ. Mm -hmm. And there's a certain way that an apprentice of Christ should carry him or herself. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can't be out there in the streets doing all types of crazy stuff and say, I'm an apprentice. People going to play now. You ain't bro. And, and, and your fellowship. Mm -hmm. And change agents. Yes. Influencers. Yes, it does. That's, See, and, that, and, that's why, and that's why they say we are the salt. Are we are to influence. Well, the world should not be influencing us. We should be influencing it. Yes. Amen. You're so right. You, you're in my message Amen. tonight. Oh, look, that's the Holy Ghost right there. That's the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I, was, I was talking about Dr. Ruth. I don't know if you remember Dr. Ruth. No, he's too young. <laughs> That's when I was a kid, man. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's that 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 the Doctor Ruth, uh, uh, Jerry Springer. Oh, that guy. Well, when I when I was younger, I, I can go back. It was first. It was Phil Donahue. Yeah. Oh yeah. Then the Oprah. The sweater. The guy with the sweater that would sit down. I mean, I didn't ever see these shows, but yeah, I used to read the book. Okay. Okay. Oh, so look at this. You talking about um. Um, would you like to be my neighbor? Right, right, right. Uh, oh, Mr. Rogers. Mr. Right. Rogers, yeah. Mr. Rogers, right. Mm -hmm. But see, when we make disciples, the text tells us by baptizing people who respond to the gospel message yeah. and by teaching them to obey everything Jesus commanded. So first and foremost, check this out. We got to know the gospel message. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Because a lot of times we expect them to have the gospel message down by osmosis. Priest Larry Mosey, I, I'm trying, Bishop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Priest Bishop. But, but the thing is, we have to be willing yes. to teach them the yes. gospel message. But in order to teach them the gospel, we yeah, have to know, know and know be it. living the gospel. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we teach them to obey everything Jesus commanded while we are obeying everything Jesus commanded. Because you the I Bible that most it. people going to read. You the Bible that people are reading. Amen. Uh -huh, uh -huh, Amen. Uh -huh. and, and if your representation, if your representation of Christ in the Bible is not good, they not come into the church. Why should they? Right. Right. They get to say they can get to say, listen, listen, right and, and, and Keisha, Keisha can agree with me. We live in an age now. Where people can go to whatever church they want to go to. That's right. Right online. All over the world. Bedside Baptist. They go to Bedside Baptist. They can cut on Facebook, find a favorite preacher. Mm. And also, as you know, Hope Mission Baptist Church and with Church Without Walls, we are also on demand. Mm -hmm. So they get they don't have to get up at 11. They don't have to get up at eight. They don't have to get up any given time to come to church. They can go to church without all the drama, without all the nonsense. They can pay their tithes. Not saying that they're right, but they have the option to go to any church that they want to across the world. So it behooves us to be doing it the right way. I'd like to ask Keisha a question as you mentioned that. Um, Ms. Keisha, um, do you find that, again, I don't know what uh, the size of your congregation might be, your fellow, your fellowship, um, but do you find, were you preaching before uh, um, the pandemic? So, yes, I was a licensed and ordained preacher before, but I did not have a church before. And, uh, yeah. and so, but I had relationship, I'm tired, I had relationships with a lot of people. And when yeah. things started closing, closing down and churches started closing down, mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. people start emailing, texting and calling me and asking me, was Jesus coming today? Oh, oh, and, yeah. Yes, and, yes. And, and so I started then, just, I went live one morning, I sung something, gave a, a couple of verses. And then the next day, did the same thing the next day. And I looked up and I had been, I said, wait a minute, God, you don't trick me. Wait a minute. What, wait a minute. What just happened here? And he took me to a post-it that I had in my <laughs> that said, 
I will serve you any way I choose, any way you choose. And he said, this is the way I choose. Mm -hmm. And so I did that for like two years. Mm -hmm. Then when the pandemic and things started opening back up, I was like, oh, I can just go, go back into a church and, and do that. And God said, that didn't want to told you to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I have a team and everything, but only one person on my team is where I am. That everybody else is somewhere uh -huh. else. And, uh -huh. and God said, oh. he eventually there will be there will go, there are going to be people in other states and other countries mm -hmm. and so i'm just i'm just following in, following instructions but that's the right that's right yeah. what i wanted to ask ultimately is that oh. um are you finding that um the, the 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 donations the tithing is um of quality when you're not physically in the building no absolutely not the this but, is the but, only thing you see that they, 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 you know, and, and then not only with church, but with work businesses. I, I heard an interesting fact the other day that uh, um, um, persons that come into the building to go to work are, are more uh, um, going to get promotions than those who do not. And though working from home is an option. Working from home is an option, but um, those that um, come in are more, I, I'm, I'm losing the word, but visible. More visible. Yeah. And so yeah. They, right. they are more apt to be, um, you know, promoted and so on and with raises and so on. And, um, but yeah, it, it's very, very convenient um, for um, persons to, now this option is available, but you know, I, 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 it's not convenient for me though. I tell you that, that, that like, I, I will say that, that the fact that I do that daily, because I know that because daily. I do that daily. And so, because, and, and I do have a team. And so when I'm gone, they take over, but, um, it does change life that every day that I'm doing that, but what is better that I notice anytime I say that I'm going to do something for others. Yes. People start, I don't get good, I do not get good tithes and offerings. Right. When I say that I'm going to do something for a group of people. Yes. Money starts coming. What I said two days ago, two days ago, that we're going to, the next thing that I'm going to do is we're giving out Bibles, paper Bibles. Yes. Uh, and, and when I said that, people are calling, yes. do you need me to make a flyer? Do you, how much, how much money is it going to cost for yes. a Bible? How many are you trying? To, how many are you trying to give up? Somebody called this afternoon and said, I'll give out some in Atlanta. And it, it, instantly when we're doing something. And so what I find is that that's that relational piece. When I was doing the, mm -hmm. the senior baskets, mm -hmm. people were saying, senior baskets, how many, how many you need? Was it? And so that is what I found. They're not great about, they're not great about the tithes and all. Yeah. But, it's but there is still say, bills. Their build in the building, whether anyone, whether people are physically in attendance or however many people are, the, the lights still need to go on. The electric, uh, you know, the lights, the 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 oil, and the, now the weather is getting back yeah. to those freezing temperatures again. And I, and, and I believe that God, God wakes away. He okay. he, yeah. he moves according to the way He wants to move. And, yeah. and, and, I, and it's our mandate as his followers to just accept it. Mm -hmm. we, he, mm -hmm. You know, and that's like, like Jesus said, they may not do it this way, but when there's a need, God makes a way. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Even that hope, even though there may, you know, when there's a need, God makes yeah. a way. And mm -hmm. he, and, and I'm going to tell you this though, uh, God is going to make a way for his church. Yes. yes. He yeah. might not make a way for man's yeah. church, for man's church, but he will make a way for his bride. Yes. He yes. will. I promise you. But let's yes. keep going. We're almost done here. Yes. We're almost done. Uh, yes. We talked about the fact that we are supposed to teach the gospel message. Mm -hmm. And we ought to teach them to obey everything Jesus commands, mm -hmm. be, you know, because we, while we are doing it. I, don't, I, want, I, I want to make sure we have that correct, that, that holiness by the, by the believer is still right. We should be walking in the holiness of God. But then it says, it says, it says, so notice Jesus tells us that he has all authority. 
And then he tells us to teach what he has commanded. So it is right to say that following Christ is a non-negotiable part of the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. Oh, by all means. Yeah. Yes. Following Christ yeah. is non-negotiable. Yes, non-negotiable. It, it has to be that way. And we have to understand that the call of discipleship mm -hmm. is a call to a change in allegiance from self to Jesus. Yes. Because remember, we used to do what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. We used to go where we wanted to go. Mm -hmm. We said what we felt we needed to say. But mm -hmm. now we have to change our allegiance from ourselves to Jesus. Yes. Even in the midst of some, when somebody is in need, sometimes are, we have to put, a, put ourselves second. Hmm? These are my purposes and strategies you'll hear on Saturday. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> but, but, but we have, but we have what you taught. Amen, amen, amen. We have to change our allegiance from self to allowing Jesus to lead us. But we just cannot take the Great Commission at face value. But we truly have to immerse ourselves in what Jesus is saying. If anyone serves Jesus, he or she must follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. There's no wriggle room in a genuine Christian's life for a faith characterized by compromise. Mm -hmm. say, say it again, please. There's no wiggle room. Uh, there's no wiggle room. In a genuine Christian's life mm -hmm. for a faith characterized by compromise. Right. Y'all got that? Mm -hmm. but that means this old agenda, what you said was this agenda of tolerance does not line up with the will of God. Amen. There's in the scripture that talks about tolerance. And right now that we are, everybody's to, uh, tolerant and acceptance of everything. That don't line up with the word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Days. Amen. And we, 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 and think about it. Jesus not only told us to make disciples, but he gave us the model to follow in doing it. Most Christians, like, like like we were saying, have divorced the teachings of Jesus from the methods of Jesus. Can I say that again? Yes. Most I, Christians. I, I mean, I agree. <laughs> have divorced the teachings of Jesus from the methods of Jesus. But understand, there's a difference between Christian and disciple. Christian is the, is, is the cliche name that we give one another. But we are to be disciples. Disciples came first before they ever called us Christians. Yeah, because a lot of a lot of people that call themselves Christians do it simply because they believe there is a God, or mm -hmm. that there's a or there's a superior being, and they call themselves Christians. Right. But but we know. Let, let, let's let, let's make this clear. Discipleship ain't easy. No. It's mm -hmm. hard. I'm going to give you three reasons why. The Bible says, if you are going to follow me, you must deny yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That mm -hmm. means what mm -hmm. happens at Hope Missionary Baptist Church, mm -hmm. what happens at Church Without Walls, mm -hmm. ain't about you. Mm -hmm. Take up your cross. We all know if you're taking up your cross, there's going to be some suffering. There's no salvation without a cross. And we must follow him. That is discipleship. Nothing about that is easy. Nothing about that is easy. But I'm going to say that again. Most Christians have divorced the teachings of Jesus from the methods of Jesus, and yet they expect the blessings of Jesus. <laughs> My mm. Lord. Mm -hmm. That was that was going to be the first message I, I talked about tonight, because when, when he did, when he did the two fish and five loaves, there had to be some brokenness for he had to break the loaves in order for the miracle to happen. Mm, mm, mm. And, and think about it, it with us. There had to be like there had to be some like there had yes. to be something wrong, a like a defeat. <laughs> right, and, and, and think about it. We've been broken. Yes. And because we've been broken, other folks are blessed. Yes. Yes, indeed. 
because through our brokenness, we have become blessed. Through our brokenness, we have become stronger, wiser. Mm -hmm. And through our brokenness, we learn to lean and depend on Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. There's a beautiful preach, song preach, yes. preach, called Broken by Shekinah Glory. Mm -hmm. I keep trying to get uh, Elder Jones to sing. He, it would be so perfect for him. Mm -hmm. Broken. I heard it again today. And Jesus showed us that the fundamental methodology in making disciples is relationships grounded in truth and in love. So our yeah. relationships must be grounded in truth in and in love. And I believe our relationships are organic. Amen. Yeah. And we have to understand that Jesus is the greatest disciple maker in history. Amen. Mm -hmm. And let, let me let me let me tell you this. You can put this in your notes. His ways work. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you what you mean by organic relationships? That means that we don't have to force them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nah. You know, you know, we we all get together. We ain't we ain't, we not we not trying to be each other's friends. We each other's friends. Understood. Uh -huh. You know, because we be cutting up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. We cut up in church. And we and we that we do praise God. But we cut, we have fun. So you're saying they need to be authentic. Yeah. Authentic Amen. relationships. Amen. You know, you, you, you're not, you're not going to try to force somebody to, to like you that ain't going to like that, 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 that don't want to be bothered with you. Hey, man, on, get the step in. Mm -hmm. But we have to understand that Jesus is the master discipler. And his methods work. Discipleship is the emphasis. Relationships are the method. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that one more time. So let me say it the other way. Discipleship is our focus. Mm -hmm. Relationships are the method. Jesus invited people, including us, to be in relationship with him. He loved us and in the process showed us how to follow God. We didn't truly know how to follow God until we came into relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. His primary method was life on life. And Jesus, and we, we're almost done. We're almost done. The method Jesus used with his disciples was the same way in the Old Testament. When they advocated for parents to use to disciple their children. Thank you. The scripture is in Deuteronomy chapter 6, mm -hmm. verses 5 through 9. It says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, I got it. with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Parents in the Old Testament were to equip their children to love and obey God. Y'all with me? Yes. The method is what? Relationship. When you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and the whole process was discipleship. In today's language, we said apprenticeship. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are to continue in what we have learned and have firmly believed. It is from our Lord. I'm almost done. Take your time. What, and what he focuses on, and I want y'all to hear me closely, is doing life. He focused on doing life with people he discipled. Jesus. I hope I didn't wake the baby. In the Bible, relationships are the context and the environment for discipleship. 
It was the way of parents and many leaders in the Old Testament. It was the way of Paul and the way of the apostles in the New Testament. But most importantly, my brothers and my sisters, it was the method that Jesus used. Jesus' methods is the best one for our churches moving forward. It can be called the intentional relational discipleship. And that's what, what we want to do. We're, we're going to start building upon as we move into the second chapter. So basically what we understand from tonight is that our focus is biblical discipleship. Our methodology is relationship. Y'all got that? That's, that's very simple. Our focus is biblical discipleship. Mm -hmm. That means we are students, mm -hmm. we are learners, mm -hmm. we are doers, we are servants. Mm -hmm. And not only are we to be disciples, we are to be disciplers. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean, Pastor Mosley? That means Hope Missionary Baptist Church and Church Without Walls, that we just don't sit there and leave when it's time to teach the people. Sometimes we have to give up our, our time our talent, and sometimes our treasure to do what God has called us to do. But Jesus was the master discipler, and we are to follow his methods. Our focus is biblical discipleship. Mm -hmm. Our method is, I would say, authentic, organic relationships. Are there any questions? No. Amen, amen. Amen. So, so we, before we go, let, let Keisha give y'all her information. I don't, I, look, that's my girl right there. You know, y'all can go check her out. I won't be mad. <laughs> so come on on. So Saturday, on uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday at 7 a.m. On Wednesday, 9, 9 a.m. Saturdays, I no longer do Saturdays. I stopped doing Saturdays about six weeks ago. And Sundays, first and third Sundays is at eight o'clock and second and fourth at 5 p.m. 5 p.m. is more like it, you might get a service. You might get a, a dialogue conversation through a group, a group of people. Um, it, so we just but you'll get teaching in the morning. You guarantee whether it's me or the team, you'll get teaching in the morning. And right now I'm teaching on how to how to study. And I'm on and I'm on the scriptures of John 13 through 34, loving one another and showing them how if you really study that verse, how many other verses that it takes you to. Because if you ain't loving, what's the point? It doesn't matter if you prophesy, it don't matter if you're singing, it don't matter what speaking in tongues, none of that matters if you're not loving people. Amen. Amen. And let you know on Saturday, I'm meeting with the preachers. And I'm probably going to start them in that book. Hmm. So I don't know if you want to jump over for that because you already got the book. What time Saturday? Um, <laughs> no, is it noon? And noon? Yes. Send, send, send me the thing. You know, Bishop Ivy is going to be in Tom, It's going to be in Thomasville's um, tomorrow. He's coming in tomorrow. Well, we're not going to start this week because they don't have a book yet. But I'm, gonna start, okay. I'm probably going to start them on that book. Ivy Hill, no, 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 not you don't know who he is. <laughs> yeah. Pastor, what's the book, Pastor? Um, let me make sure. Okay. So I got a few of them on the line tonight anyway. Uh the power of preaching. Mm -hmm. Oh, you started that one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm gonna join. I'm gonna join. <laughs> Oh, and so you know, Michelle is about to do her trial sermon in April, and the Smiths are going to be following shortly. Pastor, yeah. to God be the glory. Who's the um, author, please, Pastor? The one and only Tony Evans. Oh, nice. Amen. And it's good, it's good, it's good. Look, today I was using my the Tony Evans Bible to show them why you need the Tony Evans study Bible. If you don't have that study Bible, you need that study Bible. It is 
Yep, yeah, that one right there. You every, every preacher, anybody that claims well, well, I got the I got them on the ESV translation Bible right now. So we got I'll get the one. But then I got that one too. But we got we got look, I say I tell my classes to get one. Cause they, you know, because they're good. And what I do, I, I give them stuff for both. For all of them. Yeah, actually. Absolutely. I mix it up, you know, especially, and I told him, I said, especially when I'm giving them history and dates and stuff, I say, look, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. But, you know, so, but yeah, so yeah, so they, they're learning uh, and they're, they're, they're growing. They all get to preach, you know, here and there and everywhere. Mm -hmm. Pastor, um, between ESV, Study Bible, as well as Tony Evans, I've looked at it, you know, on, on through Kindle. Um, but and I I have a sample copy. But um, what would be a dramatic difference, or what would be a worthy difference between the two? The ESV is the one you're passing. You. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said, "Use the one that he told you." To, what he said. No, but, I, got, I have both. But the rest of the but, but when I but when I teach the I class here. Most of the time, I pull it from ESV because I can pop it up on the screen. I got the hard copy of this. I one. love it. Yeah, I mean, I say get both. Now, it either, works for me. Get, get both. I'm going to tell you why. I'm, 